What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with an unboxing for you of the HTC Aria, a new Android 2.1 powered handset for AT&T Wireless that's going to be coming on June 20th for 130 bucks after a rebate and a two year contract. Uh, this is made by HTC and is one of the lucky HTC phones to be using HTC Sense so you can get all kinds of cool widgets and uh, a few more home screens. So we'll go through the specs as we continue the unboxing here. Uh, this is a much needed phone in at and ts lineup. It's sort of as a prosumer model phone, uh, certainly above their other Android offering, the Backflip. Let's go ahead and do the unboxing. This just came from HTC and at and No need for the big knife here since we have these pull tabs. I don't have to risk my fingers to try and open a box. All right, let's see what we got in here. Have some press material. Quick start guide, push that off to the side, and again we'll go through the specs as we continue the unboxing tour. Alright, this looks like this is a pre-production packaging, it's certainly not what you're going to get uh, when you buy the device in the store on the 20th or afterwards. Um, this is just something they're sending out, I guess, to uh, to reviewers. So spec-wise, again, this is running Android 2.1. It has a 3.2 inch HVGA, uh, of course, multi-touch capacitive uh, screen. It's got inbound Wi-Fi and support for the new uh, 7.2 megabit per second HSPA network that at and starting to roll out. Uh, it's powered by a 600 megahertz Qualcomm processor and has 512 megabytes of ROM and 384 of RAM, uh, a micro SD card slot, and evidently a 1200 milliamp hour battery, uh, which is supposedly going to keep you going for about six-ish hours. Let's go ahead and start the unboxing. So there is the device itself. Push it off to the side for just a moment. It's very small. Let's see what else you're going to get in the box, or what I think you're going to get in the box. So HTC looks to be continuing its colored innards and battery scheme, and this time we have yellow. So there's a 1200 milliamp hour battery. An AT&T and uh, rather HTC sort of standard array of accessories. Got a stereo headphone with inbound mic, and of course a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Got your USB cable, and it appears that this is probably going to use, of course, micro USB, and your US wall plug. So nothing terribly fancy there. Go ahead and push that off to the side. And let's take a look at the phone itself, because there's sort of a lot to see here. Um, this is an interesting size screen. It's a bit smaller than we usually see, but it makes the phone uh, extremely pocketable, 3.2 inches and takes advantage of sort of an optical trackpad, something that we've seen before, for example, in uh, the Droid Incredible, uh, which HTC also made. So it's, of course, a capacitive multi-touch screen. You've got your home button, menu button, back and search button, standard Android array. On the left-hand side, you've got a volume up and down rocker. On the right, you've got nothing. On the back, we have a camera whose resolution, I'm actually not sure, but I will add that in the annotations. Uh, speaker grill, these sort of industrial looking screws, which I don't assume you, assume you need to remove to put in the battery. Let's go ahead and pop the battery in and we can power the sucker on and on the top you've got your hold and power button and 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Uh, let's do a quick size comparison so you can see how big or small this may look uh, next to some of its competition or friends. We've got the iPhone 3GS here, it's a 3.5 inch touchscreen. So you can see there's certainly a a difference in the size of the two devices there. We've got the Nexus One, uh, which is on multiple carriers. You can see the size difference there as well. And just for last, we've got the Big Daddy. We have the HTC Evo 4G, and it looks like a father and son uh, combo here. So I will zoom out and I'll show you a bit of the thickness of the device to help you all gauge it. Uh, it is very thin. So there it is next to the Evo. We'll bring in the Nexus One and we'll complete this smartphone sandwich with the iPhone 3GS. So let's see how the battery panel is removed here. I don't assume that you have to pop off this sort of industrial looking back, but let's see. Go ahead and see how this works. It looks like you probably have to pry it around uh, the sides here. We've sort of seen that on some other devices. Uh, think of it sort of like the Palm Pixie. So I'm going to go ahead and try and Pull this thing off. 
Okay, so there's a bit of a trick to get this back off. I do want to clarify, this does actually have a five megapixel uh, camera on the back. No LED flash, but it is a five megapixel sensor. If you want to pull the battery off, they claim in the manual you got to put your finger right in that little lip and pull off, but I don't have big nails and I can't do it. So if you take your finger and you push right in that grill and you hold the device, you'll be able to pop off the back in theory. There it goes. And I assume we're going to be looking at an all yellow back. So you've got the top off, continue to sort of work your fingers around it. There we go. So the back is off. And there is a spot there, of course, for your SIM card and a micro SD card. Let's see what size comes installed. I believe it's two gig. So you get a two gig micro SD um, going to be installed in the box when you purchase the phone. You go ahead and put the battery in, see if it's got any juice in it. Try and put this back cover on. There we go. It goes on a lot easier than it goes off. All right, so we'll turn it on and we'll see if we have any power. I'm sure you're gonna get sort of the standard Android boot screens, but in case you guys want to see it, here we go. And this is a very interesting form factor to have a, a phone with a screen uh, this small. It really makes it uh, very tiny, especially interesting compared to sort of phones now are going larger and larger screens, like the 4.3 inch on the Evo 4G, we've seen on the HD2, um, and some of the new other phones that are coming out, which get larger and larger. Uh, this is sort of more of a prosumer model for when you want uh, power, but you don't need screaming speeds, you want something that's gonna be able to multitask, um, something that's sort of going to get you through the day. Uh, this looks to be sort of the, the sweet spot. This would be akin to uh, the HTC Hero uh, type of phone. So not, not at the top of the line, uh, but certainly not at the bottom. So it's going to be the phone that I think a lot of people are going to be looking for uh, when they come to Android for AT&T. So we get the HTC Quietly Brilliant, the unnecessarily loud AT&T 3G Screaming Fireballs, which I guess you could say are daring. And there we have, after a few minutes, the low screen letting me know there's not a SIM card in there. You get the slide to unlock, it's gonna take me to uh, some of the setup stuff. And there you have it, a first look at the HTC Aria. Uh, stay tuned to the channel for a ton of other coverage, seeing how this stacks up with other Android devices. Anyway, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I will see you in the next video. And for all your tech news, be sure to check out the site, technobuffalo.com. If you wanna create your own sub blog or interact with users in our built-in social network, We've got you covered for exclusive content. Check me out at Twitter, twitter.com slash John4Lakers. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.